Psalm 119, verse 126. And the psalmist is crying out here in verse number 126. He said, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. So the psalmist is saying in verse number 126, he said, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. He said, Therefore I love thy commandments. And the thought I have this morning on it, it's time to love your Bible more. Amen. It's time to love your Bible more. That's what he was saying. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this congregation that's come out. I appreciate the opportunity to stand here. Appreciate Brother Foster and his faithfulness to you through the years. And I thank you for this church. Thank you that they're still uh, worshiping you after all these years of not being here. And I thank you again that you'd uh, allow me to stand and to preach the Word of God. And I pray you'd use me today in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to look at this here in this text. And uh, Psalm 119 is all about the Word of God. Matter of fact, after the first... Uh, after the first, uh, all of Psalm 119 is laid out. I believe each, it's uh, uh, by the letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it's eight verses behind each of those uh, letters of the alphabet. And I think it's the first, uh, the first uh, five verses uh, of Psalm 119 uh, that the psalmist is talking about the Word of God. He says there in verse number 1, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And the Bible says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. He said, They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. He said, Thou, here's where he starts talking to God. He says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. So from verse 4 on down through verse, uh, what is it, 176 verses of Psalm 119. In, in, every, in 176 verses, 171 times, you'll find this one three-letter word, T-H-Y. Amen. And so what Psalm 119 is, is the psalmist having a conversation with God about his word. And matter of fact, he's magnifying God's word to God. Amen. The Bible said in Psalm 138, and Psalm 138, I thought I was going to go there this morning, but uh, Psalm 138, he said, Though I dwell in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. And he talks about how that God has magnified his word above all his name. Amen. I, when I deal with Jehovah Witnesses and I always ask them I, always, uh, I don't uh, deal with a lot of their other doctrines but the main thing I try to take a Mormon to or Jehovah Witness is the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ and I ask them I say what is the name above every name and they'll say Jehovah and I said well the Bible says over in the book of Philippians that God has given Jesus a name that's above every name amen and but uh, you say, well, uh, uh, and thank God Jesus was Jehovah in flesh. He was God manifest in the flesh, the Bible tells us. Uh, but uh, they're, they're one and the same. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. First John said there are three that bear record in heaven. Uh, the Father, the Word, uh, and the Holy Ghost. And these three uh, are one. You say, uh, uh, can you figure that out? I can't, but I read it in the Word of God. And I, I, I'm not required to figure it out, but I'm required uh, uh, to believe believe what the Word of God has to say. Amen. And so uh, the psalmist here, probably uh, David, is David the one that wrote Psalm 119? But we know God wrote it. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible said that the man of God may be perfect, uh, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And he, he, he said that uh, after he had just quoted about uh, perilous times and the, how men would be ever learning and never able to come under the knowledge of the truth. But he told Timothy, he said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. He said, Timothy, in that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Now, Timothy didn't need to be saved, but he is talking about that salvation that's nearer than when we believe. There's a salvation when we believe of our souls. And after that, we're ever approaching and ever coming nearer to that salvation of this body, that resurrected body. Amen. And so uh, we've got the Word of God. I had that other outline in there. I better put it back here. 
before it falls out and wants me to preach it too, amen. But, uh, uh, but we're ever approaching the coming of the Lord and we're living in perilous, dangerous, perverted times, amen. Hey, our, our main map, our main light, our, our main guide through a dark world is this Bible right here. It's the Word of God. Uh, but I'll tell you this, it's going to determine on how much we love the Word of God. I believe, I believe you love the Word of God, but I'll tell you this, we could all love the Word of God more. We could love the Bible more than we ever have before. And a matter of fact, the psalmist, as he's having a conversation with God, he says to God, it is time for thee to work. He said, for they have made void thy law. He said, therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. And he said, therefore, he said, therefore again, he said, therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right Right, and I hate every false way. Do you believe that this morning? Well, you're weird and you're going to get more weird. Right. Right. Amen. Right. If we really believe this Bible, I believe if we really believe the Bible, uh, we'll behave what the Bible teaches us. Uh, and if you behave like this Bible teaches, you and I behave like this Bible says, uh, as America gets more and more wicked, we're going to be stranger and stranger. Uh, but the psalmist said here, it is time for thee to work, Lord, for they have made void thy law. So let me say again and encourage you when you're reading the Word of God, I thank God for prayer. I believe prayer and Bible reading are both a two-way street or a two-way conversation. You can talk to God while you pray and the greatest time to hear God's when you're praying. But hey, I notice here in Psalm 119 the Word of God is not just God talking to us, but it's us talking to God. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, one of these verses here I don't have time to turn to. He said, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things I of thy law. There's some wondrous things in the Word of God. I, I'm afraid in our day we love the television more than we love the Bible. We love our cell phone more than we love the Bible. Uh, we love our job and overtime more than we love the Bible. Uh, uh, we love our hobbies, uh, our hunting uh, uh, more than we love the Bible. Uh, and may not be everything wrong with some of those things, uh, uh, but I'm telling you it may be. Uh, we even have to get rid of some things that are not wrong uh, uh, because it's time uh, uh, to love the Bible more. Yeah, Amen. Amen. He said it's time uh, uh, for thee to work, Lord. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm talking about this book when I say the Bible. Amen. I'm not against necessarily these apps. Uh, my wife, she was erasing some apps on my phone. Uh, I don't know half of what I'm doing half the time on that thing. Uh, and uh, she said, well, you want me to uh, take this Bible app off of there? Uh, some of them aren't right. She didn't know if it was a good one. I said, no. Uh, sometime I'll pull that thing up uh, at work and, and uh, have some. But I'm telling you, you cannot replace the book. Thank God for things we've got. Uh, but uh, too, too much blood has been shed for the printed page. For the written word of God. Jesus didn't say as it was transcribed on a computer somewhere. And I'm not against that. Uh, and it was not on an app somewhere. Uh, uh, Jesus said to the devil as it is written. Uh, he told that. And I understand they didn't have phones in. But even if they did, he'd have still said it's written. Amen. You say, how do you know? Because there's coming a day uh, at a great white throne judgment. Uh, and the, the screen's not going to be rolled down. Uh, the books are going to be open. Uh, I believe it's talking about the book just like this, amen. Uh, uh, this book right here uh, is going to be opened up uh, and thank God for some things that help us. Uh, uh, but I, I try to encourage people everywhere I go uh, uh, that we better keep this book right here. Uh, the, these phones in our pockets, uh, they could cut them off just like that. They could cut off the internet just like that. And listen, you better store it up uh, in writing. Fine to have it on there. But you better have what I guess they call a hard copy, amen. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, this morning I've got God's Word in writing. You're so preacher, they might burn all of them. It'd take a while in America. Thank God for all the Bibles we've got uh, and the only ones we've got is the King James Version. Amen. Uh, it'd take them a while to burn them all up. Uh, but if they did destroy all of them, uh, uh, the Bible says forever, O Lord, uh, thy word uh, is settled in heaven. Amen. 
He said here in verse number 126, he said, It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they made void thy law. And uh, that word void means to break asunder. That made me think. I looked that strong concordance definition the break asunder. I thought about Moses, didn't you? How Moses come down. He is frustrated. They thought they was having revival down there. They are just making a racket of ungodliness and unrighteousness, falling an idol. And Moses came down aggravated and he broke asunder those tablets. Hey, that didn't worry God any. Amen. I mean, God wasn't pleased, no doubt, with what Moses did. But God didn't say, what am I going to do, man? broken my law. Hey, God's law will stand forever. God's word endureth forever, the Bible says. He said, come back up here, Moses. I'll take my finger again and I'll write it again. I'm glad it's forever settled in heaven this morning, aren't you? It means uh, to break asunder. I wonder how, how, how much uh, is the word of God in your house established in your home? Thank God for church that preaches, uh, but as much as the man of God preaches uh, and the teachers teach, uh, if, the, if the foundation of your home uh, is not the Word of God in these times, uh, uh, you better get on the rock. Uh, we better get our children uh, uh, back on the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word this morning. Uh, you know what? I enjoy things that I love. It's easier uh, to participate in something I love. Uh, I mean, hey, uh, but if you don't love your Bible like y'all do, uh, it's hard. Lord, I understand the Bible said uh, that the much studies are weariness of the flesh. Now, I'm not a, we ought to train our body to read the Word of God. When I first got married, I wouldn't eat no Brussels sprouts, and I didn't eat no broccoli. I, if you'll sear them Brussels sprouts real good, I'll eat them or at least swallow them down. My wife said, You need to eat something green. <laughs> I'm kind of like her daddy. I'd, I'd get green beans and then pile every greasy thing I could on top of it. Amen. But you know what? Through the years, amen. <laughs> but through the years, uh, uh, I learned, acquired a taste for that. Now I like it. Yeah, God. God, good. The Bible says as newborn babes, you'll desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Hey, thank God for growing grace in the Word of God. And uh, so the psalmist said here that they may void thy law. It means to break asunder. It means to cause to cease. Amen. Has it ceased at your house? Oh, we can talk about the government. We can talk about the sodomites and the transgender crowd. Amen. I'm not mad at you this morning. I'm just preaching the Bible. It, it's reprove, rebuke, and exhort. I need it. I, I need it just as much as you do. My flesh is lazy like yours. Uh, but they're trying uh, in America more and more uh, to cause to cease uh, this Bible right here. Uh, uh, there's plenty of laws already written uh, and plenty of voices already being spoken against. The Word of God is hate literature uh, as uh, we need to get this out of our schools. Uh, and look what they're bringing in. Uh, but I, hey, that's what that's what reprobate infidels do I want them to be saved but I'm telling you it's as odd it ought to be strange that God's people the word of God is not continually in their house in their mouth over there in Deuteronomy he said bind them about about your neck wonder what he said write them on your gates I haven't done that in my house I've started getting convicted about it. might be a good day Yeah, that fellow down the road that's got Bible verses all over his car I'm not saying you have to do that amen might have it in his yard. Just know the Bible does teach such things like that. But it didn't just say so we can say I believe the King James Bible. It said no that when you walk about uh, teaching about the Word of God. When you're about to lay down uh, teaching the Word of God. Hey we need it's time to love our Bible more. Amen. I believe all of life's troubles and church troubles could be avoided or absorbed if we love the Bible. I believe every answer I need is in this book, don't you? I mean, you so you can pray and talk to God. He wouldn't give me any answer contrary to this Bible right here. He wouldn't give me any extra revelation on this Bible right here. And so thank God uh, uh, there's all the answers uh, we need. You say, is this all God knows? Oh, no, this is not all God knows. Uh, this is all God wants us to know on this side of eternity. And uh, thank God what a book we've got. Do we love it? I'm saying, let me say again, it's time to. Yeah. Amen. Y'all seeing the same America? 
Matter of fact, you see in the same world I'm seeing, is this my water or yours? Amen. I can go a little while longer. Amen. So, it means to break asunder. That word void, to break asunder, to cause to cease. Now listen to this definition. To make of none effect. Well, that's their goal. That's the goal. It's working. Amen. That is the goal. But hey, uh, I, I, I just want to keep it working down at my house. I want to keep going to a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching uh, uh, church uh, that, that believes uh, that the Word of God has great effect on people's lives. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, so he says here, they've made void thy law. I, I'm glad there, there's a test in Psalm 119 about whether we love the Word of God. I preached one time out of this text... Uh, he said in verse number 128, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. I'll just include this, preach another time out of this, and it's preaching a series on things you'll hate when you love the Bible. I'm from deep south, I did say things, all right? Amen, things. Get that right. We're not up north yet, are we? I, I don't care either way, it don't matter. You can go to heaven from either place if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? But uh, I get to talk and forget what I'm saying. Uh, I, th th things you'll hate when you love the Bible. The more this Bible gets in me and you, there'll be some things about ourselves we'll hate. He said over here in one of these places, I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Amen? What lives inside of me, what lives inside of you is a liar. So I don't believe that. The Bible said if you say that you're not a liar, the truth's not in you. If you say if you've not lied, it ain't condoning lying, saying be a liar. But thank God, I, I, when, when I was lost, I was calling God a liar. I was lying to myself, according to 1 John. But ever since I got born again, and the more of the Word of God I got put in my heart, I despise lying in myself. Yes, good. I despise my flesh. Yes, right. Amen. Hey, I thank God for streets of gold. I thank God for gates of pearl. I thank God that those things are going to be great. I thank God there's some men of God that have went on. I mean, all my family, as far as I know, most of them still alive and they're lost. I'm hoping they'll get saved and I'll see them one day. But the greatest thing about heaven, the greatest thing, the first thing that's the greatest thing is seeing Jesus Christ as He is. Amen. Second greatest thing is being like him. Amen. First thing, seeing him like he is. Uh, the second greatest thing is being like him. I'm glad, thank God, I won't have this old rebellious uh, old man. Uh, I'll, I'll be new all over, thank God. And the book told me about that. There are some things this flesh loves that God doesn't love. And the God inside of me doesn't love it. And the more I take this book right here, take this sword, take this hammer, take this light, uh, the more it helps me, thank God. Look at verse number 133. He said, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Boy, that's pretty good, isn't it? You got some sin that's got a dominion over you? Now somebody said I tried to get the definition of that word iniquity that it uses there is talking about that inward sin. Is that what that somebody said that in uh, say one way you can do the, uh, that word iniquity is talking about those inward things. Look, uh, we we can take care of in pent Baptist those outward things and uh, and we can uh, look good, but th the Bible is something uh, that'll help us. Uh, I mean, we may not have dominion. Uh, the the outward things may not have dominion over us as far as men's eyes. I tell you what, out of the heart of man proceedeth. This Bible is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I'll admit it to you, even standing in the pulpit, my thoughts are not always what they ought to be. And yours aren't either, Amen. The psalmist said over there in Psalm 119, uh, 
wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He looked to God and he said, By taking heed thereto according to thy word. He said, God, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Are we wholeheartedly reading our Bible? We wholeheart, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. He said, Thy word have a hidden mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Thank God for this book this morning. I'm having a good time if you ain't. No, I know you are. Praise the, I'm just kidding. You got evangelists, you got to sound mean. Amen. Amen. <laughs> got to sound like a gunslinger. Leave it for the pastor to take care of. No. But I'll tell you what, I believe what would help this pastor is if you, you fell in the love of the Bible. I hope you already are, but I'm telling you, I need to fall in love with it more. Let me say again, it's time to love the Bible more. Read it more. Study it more. I mean, hey, uh, whatever more you can do with it. So here's some things that uh, the psalmist said. Look at verse number 46. <coughs> I don't normally preach my voice out this soon. Verse number, uh, well, let's look at verse uh, number 45 for sake of the message. Now, he's saying, and, well, verse number 44, get us to where that ends at. He said, so shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. You know where our liberties went? America no longer loves the Bible. The majority of Christians no longer love the Bible. Amen. I'm, I'm guilty. I want to love it more. Our liberties are going away because you cannot walk at liberty without God's Word. He's, he's the author of liberty. One missionary said what's happened to America is the, the life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness has killed us. Because our happiness ain't in the Word of God. People that wrote that, which I understand all of them wasn't Bible-even Christians, uh, uh, but some that had great influence on that, a lot of Baptists had influence on that. Uh, they wanted a place uh, where life meant uh, trying to live for God and liberty meant based on the Word of God and the pursuit of happiness was the Word of God. Uh, blessed are the undefiled in the way it says here in Psalm 119. Uh, hey, uh, the Bible tells us that true happiness for a child of God uh, it's from the Word of God. Right. Steady diet of it. Amen. I'm trying to get to this test about whether we love the Bible, but Psalm 119 is full, isn't it? Verse 45, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And uh, I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. So he's linked verse 46 and verse 47 with that word, and. Isn't that right? right. So he says in verse 46, uh, Because I love your word, I'll declare it. Yes, he said, I'm not ashamed of it. Yep. Right. He said, he said uh, I will speak thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. I mean, hey, you believe it or not, I'm not a public speaker. The first, I was in secular school playing ball, and uh, the Lord was calling me to preach, but before that I dropped speech class four straight semesters. <laughs> Say, why? I wasn't getting in front of nobody. Still don't want to. Y'all scare me to death. If I had to get up here without the Holy Ghost, no, I feel like He's up here helping me. Amen. But hey... Uh, my flesh is backward and afraid, but the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, the, the, the Spirit of Truth that inspired this Bible right here, uh, wants me to declare it to people. Amen. Don't be ashamed. I'm not saying necessarily you gotta you gotta just stand there and preach to somebody. Now Philip went to a chair. He preached to that Ethiopian eunuch. I'm not saying you have to preach at the gas pump, but I'm telling you, if God says declare it, don't, it doesn't matter if it's the poor, it's the middle class, it's a king on their throne. Hey, if you love the Word of God, there'll be a declaration in your heart that'll have to come out of your mouth. Yes, right. There'll be a delight. Verse 47, he said, and I will delight myself. Yes. What, what, what most 
People are waiting on in the church houses for the preacher to delight you in the Bible. Boy, if he has something good, I just need something. Yeah, I mean, he, he can help you, but I'm telling you what, it all just preaching the pastor all just be a supplement. Wouldn't that be right, Pastor? I mean, you, you ought to come, you and I ought to come in full, uh, uh, full of the Word of God uh, and just a craving more of it. Right. Good. Amen? There, there'll be a declaration if you love the Word of God. There, there'll be a delight in it. Sure. And you'll delight yourself. Yeah. When's the last time you read your Bible and wasn't nobody around and just a tear came down your cheek, a smile come across your face? I'm not saying that's every time I read the Bible, uh, but I'm telling you I thank God for times uh, uh, when it wasn't just looked like ants running around on paper, but God showed up yeah. and He showed me Himself and He showed me myself. Right. Good. Amen. Good. Yep. Is it a delight to read your Bible? Is it a delight to hear Bible preaching? Delight me, pastor. Delight me, evangelist. Uh, delight me, Sunday school teacher. Hey, even all the young people, some young people in here, but uh, even the young people at a young age ought to delight themselves in the Word of God. Amen. Greatest thing you and I can do for our children is get them to memorize the Word of God. Amen. Read it. Yeah. Amen. Good. So I ain't going to make them read it. You make them brush your teeth. I'd rather all their teeth fall out and they know the Bible, wouldn't you? But I ain't going to let their teeth fall out either. <laughs> Amen. There'll be a delight. There'll be a display. Look at verse 48. He said, My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments which I have loved. Before I hear all these Pentecostals, our family walks around and they're dressed right and, and try to be modest, not to be better than somebody else, but according to what the Bible says. And uh, people say, oh, y'all Pentecostal? I say hundreds of years. I don't say it mean like that, but sometimes I'll just say, well, hundreds of years before there's ever a Pentecostal, we knew we were saved. Yeah. And, we could, and we could keep it. Yeah. And we are shouting, yeah. raising our hands. Sure. Say, why was that? There was a delight in our heart that brought a display out of our body. It's all right. I don't know what goes on here. I don't preach for response. I just try. I like response. But I'm telling you what, this book gets inside of you. It may not happen here. But I'm telling you, sometimes in the, in the secret place, you can lift up holy hands and pray. He'll lift up holy hands and praise. And listen, thank God we got the answer. We can raise our hands. He said, because I love it, I lift up my hands. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe you don't love the Bible like y'all do. I'm convinced the reason some of these people are running to the modern day church, the most, the most reason they've never been born again. There might be some of them that got saved, and I believe the Holy Ghost will guide them out of all falsehood into all truth, and they'll get out of that mess. But I'm telling you, dead, dried up Baptist churches, I'm not saying you are, I don't know. I ain't been here long enough yet. We'll see how you react to the preaching, the pastor. Amen. <laughs> but really, it's not even really about here. And I might say some more about this tonight, the message, if the Lord lets me preach it. Uh, but years ago, it, it wasn't about coming and getting primed up at the house of God. They come in with it. They lived with it every day. Amen. That they they and then they weren't perfect, but they lived in the overflow more than I and you do. Amen. Say what's the overflow? You get filled with the Spirit, it'll overflow. I tell you, there's no way to be filled with the Holy Ghost without being filled with the Holy Scriptures. No way at all. Do y'all agree with that? Time to love the Bible. There'll be a display. It'll be a daily thing. I gotta hurry up. I got three main points, uh, uh, but I'm gonna quit on time. Amen. Uh, the psalmist said, "Oh, how love I thy law!" Exclamation point. Look at that. Look at that verse number ninety-seven. He said, "Oh, how love I thy law!" Exclamation point. Amen. You know how you know you love the Bible when it's an exclamation point. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Amen. 
It's a daily thing. Now, that didn't say uh, take your Bible and uh, use up the boss's time uh, and uh, steal money. Uh, hey, I found out I can work and meditate. <laughs> I can work and the word of God flow through my mind and help me through any day that comes about, thank God. Hey, listen, it's time to love the Bible more. Well, let me go back to my uh, title I gave it. It's time to love your Bible more. That narrows it down. You glad you got a Bible? Didn't squeak when you opened it this morning, did it? <laughs> Amen. I believe if you love the Bible, there won't be a departure. Verse 165 said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now, in years gone by preaching, and maybe not on purpose, I've offended people with my attitude about the truth, about the law of God. But you, if you're saved, even if a man is offensive in the pulpit, you won't stay offended long about the Word of God. If you get offended by the law of God and you depart, there's something wrong. Paul said over there in 1 Timothy 4, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. There's some that depart the church and go to another one and say everything's okay and they've departed the faith by going to a different church that don't preach the faith. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm going to church. How many times you heard that, Brother Foster, over these years? And you knew it wasn't a Bible-believing church. You knew their kids were going to something that wasn't going to preach what thus saith the Word of God. Amen. I mean, listen, it said uh, 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 they shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Thank God for this book right here uh, to give me the doctrine that I need. Uh, I want to love it more. It's time. Uh, it's time to love the Bible more because uh, deception's running rampant even in a lot of modern day independent Baptist churches. There's independent Baptist preachers standing up because they want to sound good. They want to write another book uh, and they're going contrary uh, to the doctrines of this Bible right here. You're right. You're right. Amen. I want to love it, don't you? Yeah. It's time to. Yeah. If, if ever we need to love the Bible more, it's now. Yeah. Oh, you ever know Brother Berman Cape? Old time preacher down there in North Georgia, saved as a drunk. You ever heard Brother Ed Blue? Oh, Brother Ed said any time he saw, he called him Cape. He said, when Cape come, you knew it's about time to get in a fight because Cape got uh, drunk on liquor and loved to fight. Brother Ed Blue was driving a trash truck. He said, here come Cape. And he thought, well, I better get ready to fight. And he said, uh, there was a different countenance. Uh, and he said, Ed, he said, I got born again last night. Poured all the liquor out. Uh, and he said, I'm going to church down here. God called him to preach. Uh, every time I seen him, uh, he'd sing that wonderful book, Divide. Him and his wife, I mean, the first time I ever seen him, uh, uh, three men had to help him to the pulpit. And before you know it, him and his wife got to sing about crossing over Jordan, uh, singing about the wonderful book divine and he'd kiss it every chance he got and kiss it hey didn't three men have to help him down he's over on the side altar waving the keys to death hell and the grave and went back to his seat with no help amen and he kissed that book all the way you know why he loved it I want to love it more don't you let's go back to those three verses and I'll just Mention something out of each verse. Let me say we ought to love our Bible more, but it's time to love the Bible more. And I'll say one one reason here, this late in the message, one reason. Because <laughs> it's timeless. Look at that verse 126. It is time for the Lord to work. For they made void thy law. He didn't say, Well, Lord, you know, it's uh, 2022. Times have changed. Oh, yes. This book had an amen. I'm glad it doesn't change, aren't you? It'll work any time. It'll work to raise your family. It'll work to run the church. It'll work for you to be a better Christian. It doesn't matter what time it is. The Word of God will work if we'll fall in love with it. Amen? Uh, the Word of God work, works any time. I believe God works according to His Word, don't you? 
It's a timeless thing. Take time for the timeless Word of God. I think about Martha and Mary over there in Luke 10. <laughs> Amen? I don't have time to go through the whole thing. I want to take about five more minutes to get out about ten till everything. All right? Amen. <laughs> but if the crowd comes in, I'll just keep going. Amen. It comes in. Amen. Amen. But over there, the Bible says that Martha received him into her house. And the next verse says that Mary also sat at the feet of Jesus. If I'm understanding that, when Jesus first came in, they both sat down at his feet. Here's, here's Martha, or here's Mary. Just a light in her eyes. Here's Martha. Ain't nothing wrong with working, amen. I'm telling you, you know what? Martha, Martha said, Lord, don't you care that she's left me to do this myself? You have to leave some things. Nothing wrong with keeping house. Nothing wrong with cooking, whatever might have been going on there. I mean, she may have even been doing it for the Lord. We even get busy in things we say we're doing for the Lord, and it keeps us from loving the Bible. Isn't that amazing? I'm telling you, I'm guilty. I'm preaching to me and you this morning. Uh, there's times I'm guilty. Of, I want to be like Mary. I want to take time to sit at his feet and hear his words. You know why? He said, Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Right. Chosen. It's a choice. Right. It's time to make the choice to love her Bible more. Right. Amen. Holy Ghost can fill in the blanks what that means for you, what it means for me. Amen. There's a lot more preaching about Mary and Martha, but I'll let me say the book is timeless. Amen. I, I, I want to love the Bible more because it's timeless. Ain't you glad you got the Bible in this day? What a wicked time. I've heard people say, I've got an opportunity to witness to them. They're saying, I don't know what's going on. I said, I do. I said, it ain't anything to I, I said, let me tell you what it says going on, thank God. I'm telling you, as children of God, we ought to be running hard this last lap. Amen? What was that verse talks about a praise in her lips and a two-edged sword in her hand, something like that? But anyway, time's not run out on the Word of God. Amen? Uh, it's timeless. In verse 126, he said, It is time for thee, Lord, to work. I'm glad he didn't say you can't do anything about it, Lord. They may board your law. Nothing you, ain't you glad you got a God that wanted to start his Bible in the beginning? God. He didn't say who he was. He didn't say how he did it. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, verse 126, it's timeless. Verse 127, it's priceless. He said there in verse 127, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold. That's pretty high. Amen. He said, well, let me, the Holy Ghost said, you done right there, amen. He said, yea, above fine gold. In gold in our day, uh, uh, thousands of dollars an ounce. Uh, I'm telling you, it wouldn't matter how much gold it is. Uh, this is a priceless book right here. It can get you into and keep you out of uh, what money never could. It can keep some things out of your heart that money never could. That rich man over there, that rich man over there in Luke 16, he he'd probably could buy the finest wines, but he couldn't buy a drink, a drop of water on his tongue in hell. But if he'd believed Moses and the prophets, he evidently knew who they was because when Abraham said, if they receive not Moses and the prophets, he didn't say, who's that? Hey, he knew, and he rejected it, and he, he lived sumptuously every day, the Bible says. This is a priceless book. He said, would you send to Lazarus, and he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now, now and hell, now, he is comforted and thou art tormented. Right. He probably could have got into any secret society, any club he wanted to. Amen? But he couldn't get out of hell. 
On time he will get out to be cast in the lake of fire. He rejected God's priceless word. Priceless, amen. We spend all our time, a lot of times on things to help our kids with this world. And I'm not saying everything's wrong, but I, I, I'll go this far to say if it's not Bible-based, your kids don't need it. Is that, too much, is that too much to ask of a Christian? Amen. It's priceless. Spend all this money to try to improve this and prove that, and we got a priceless book. Let me give you the last one. It's matchless. Verse 128, he said, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. What a radical. You say you believe every jot and every tittle. And hey, I don't understand every jot and every tittle. But by the grace of God, I want to learn more of it. And I want to say I believe every bit of it. He said, therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and hate every false way. Even when my flesh says, well, what does that mean? It's right. Amen? Let me see if I can find this one verse here that goes along with this. Verse 160. This is where I'll close at. Verse 160, Psalm 119. The psalmist said, Thy word. Remember again, he's talking to God. Let me encourage you in closing. Talk to God about His word this week. Uh, God won't think you're weird if you magnify His word to Him. He won't think you're weird if you'll say, God, show me. God, help me. Amen. Verse 160 said, Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. That word endure speaks about not being an easy thing. Now, it ain't about God's word. It ain't man's not going to do away with it. But it's endured a lot. We ought to love it more. It's time to love the Bible more. Amen. It's timeless, it's priceless, it's matchless. It's above every other every other written anything on the planet. It's above everything. Amen. It's not just the our final authority, it's our only authority. Thank God it's final, but it's the only. Come on, Brother Foster. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.